we need to address something that I have noticed almost everybody has it wrong. And I say that because of the book of Revelation and the time that we're living in right now, I believe to be the last days. Revelation 14, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give him or give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So the first angel comes, and he has the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. That would be us. Um, so that will be preached to every nation and kindred and tongue and people right now there shouldn't be many of you in the world anywhere that haven't heard this gospel um we've been preaching this gospel for three years and we've been screaming it loud like the voice of a thunder so then the next angel uh he says babylon has fallen is fallen that great city because she made the world drunk with the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the next angel warns, uh, if any man worship the beast in his image or receive the, his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God. So to understand that, we have to go to Revelation 2, um, verse 22, uh, explains it. Let's see here. Uh, Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. So what would repentance be in this case? In Revelation 17, verse 1 and 2, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, the vials of wrath, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show you the, the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. That's Babylon. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Let me talk about that for a second. The context of this book of Revelation is a vision. John was shown a vision and he wrote down what he saw, beheld, uh, what he saw with his eyes. Okay. It was visual that John was describing this fornication. So keep that in mind while we talk about the kings of the earth and who they are. Revelation 17 verse 12 says, and the 10 horns, which thou sawest, Remember, John saw a beast that had seven heads and ten horns. And Babylon was riding on the beast. Um, okay, I'm going to read that over. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. Well, Daniel saw these ten horns too. Um, he saw four beasts that were all different from each other. And the fourth one had ten horns. And... Daniel was actually frightened of this fourth beast because of what he saw. And Daniel had a vision also. So he was visually seeing the things that he wrote down too. In Daniel 7 verse 7 is the verse that 
he sees that fourth beast in. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, it devoured and brake in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Then, in Daniel 7, verse 17, he's given an interpretation of what these four beasts that he saw were. And it says, These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. And then in verse 23, it says, Thus he said, uh, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And then in Daniel 8, we actually get another vision of a ram that had two horns, and the two horns were high, and one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. Um, and if we look up the word ram in Hebrew, it's more likely that uh, he was describing something more like a column or a post or a pole or a pilaster. Um, he could have been describing an animal, but I personally don't think he was, and I don't think it's likely that he was. Once you look up the definition or the meaning of the word A-Y-I-L in Hebrew. And then in Daniel 8, verses 24 and 25, it says, And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and holy people. That would be the the people that follow God. He's going to destroy them. Uh, that's what it says. And through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. Who has stood up to the prince of princes? Literally, who has? I would say NASA has. I would say all those space agencies have. And specifically, in this time we're living in now, Elon Musk has. He uh, launched a red cherry, uh, cherry red Tesla sports car in a rocket launch up to space. Um, let me read that verse again. And through his policy also shall cause, he also shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. So we know what's coming in the future for Elon Musk. The point I want to make in this video, I don't want to drag it on, is in Revelation 13. I believe that we are living in the very last days before the wrath of God is poured out. And that'll happen, I think, for 42 months. Um, and the beast will continue for that long, too. Uh, in Revelation 13, verse 3, it says, And I saw one of his heads as it was were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. Let me go to Revelation 17, and we find out why we, uh, why would people wonder at the beast or not wonder at the beast. Well, John wondered at the beast, and the angel said, hey, what are you doing? Because you do that, I'm going to show you the mystery uh, of the woman. So we'll, we'll look at that. Um, the beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall descend, ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold, when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. 
verse 5 in chapter 13 of Revelation. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. This is probably one of the most important verses for the time that we're living in and for people to face reality and stop living in denial. Uh, it is verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The wrath of God is upon us, guys. Don't live in denial. It's not going to help the situation.